of these. I don't forget it. Well, how about the incident uh, that you forgot about where they executed little Sammy Weaver? You forgot that? When one of the brave, brave men at the ATF executed a little boy, 14 years old, with a telescopic rifle, shot him dead in the, in the, in the, in the grass, and never went to prison because Dianne Feinstein covered it up for him. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I'll go to my grave remembering what that thing Dianne Feinstein did during those hearings on the Weaver killings by the ATF. What was just a standoff, but the fascistic federal government was brought in. An ATF punk killed him with a telescopic rifle. And what did Dianne Feinstein do during the fake hearings that looked like they were out of the Soviet Union? Dianne Feinstein has compromised a human being as possible in the United States of America. Look at the dealings of that family and tell me there's been no profiteering, and I'll tell you you're lying. I will tell you you're lying. Anyone with a brain can see the direct link between her rise in family fortunes and her sitting on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Make no mistake about it, we're living in a sick nation. When you hear about a dysfunctional government and a Congress that doesn't work, Look no further than San Francisco and ask yourself how Feinstein, Pelosi, and Boxer have benefited and profited from their years in government. And don't tell me there's no relationship. It's because they have bought the press off or scared the press off. There is no press in San Francisco. It doesn't exist. Feinstein ran fake hearings, and they put the ATF murderers behind curtains. I'll never forget as long as I live so we couldn't see them. I sat there with my wife watching it. And I saw Feinstein, like out of a kabuki play, say to the ATF murderer who was hidden by something, so she was moving behind a calico curtain when you shot her, officer? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, said the Queen of Diamonds. Back in a minute. It is the uh, Savage Nation. So a uh, peaceful protest that was executed in the United States of America by the federal government, and there is no outcry from the so-called left, nor from the media. Donald Trump withdraws from a debate, and that becomes the whole news in the United States of America. What if a black group of protesters, one of them was executed with his hands out of a window, giving up to the police? Do you suppose there'd be an outcry somewhere? I suspect that uh, Jeff, Jesse High Jackson, Reverend, the great Reverend Sharpton, no one even knows where he got his reverend's certificate from. Some say it's from a crackerjack box that he found in a bodega in the Bronx because no one knows that he ever went to school anywhere, but he's the reverend to the media. Reverend, um, Reverend, uh, 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 well, I forget his name already. Now he's a, the big, the big kingmaker. <clears throat> Bloomberg now goes and sits at the feet of a street agitator. Bloomberg has less of a chance to be president than I do. He could spend a billion dollars, I could spend one dollar and have more votes than Bloomberg. But this is the crazy country we're living in. So as I said to him on my show yesterday, an empty chair would do more for you than you even showing up. I said that yesterday, didn't I? I did. I don't care what, what anyone else says. I'm the one who led this. I don't care that I'm not on the Drudge Report. I'm not part of the, of the cabal. You never see me on the Drudge Report, do you? Tonight, Trump set for O'Reilly. Well, last night he was on the Savage Nation. You didn't see that on the Drudge Report, did you? No. Now, that tells you all you need to know about where I stand in the media. There is no media for Michael Savage, except you, the audience. For however long I am on the radio, this is the Savage Nation. This is the only thing that counts. Nothing else matters to me. And when I come back to set the record straight, I will play the interview with Donald Trump, and you will see... You will see for yourself whether or not I had any, any influence on whether he decided to withdraw from that debate. Make up your own minds. You don't have to go to the Internet to make up your minds. Go to the radio. This is the Savage Nation. Also, White Lives Matter. Also, Zeta confirmed in L.A. All this and more in the Savage Nation. You can't miss it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, all you want to do is talk about Trump. That's okay. We'll talk about Trump. In a few seconds, I'm going to play a one-minute excerpt from yesterday's interview with Donald Trump where I mentioned to him that I wouldn't attend a debate if I were him. And you decide for yourself if I had any, any influence in that decision. Now, he may yet decide to attend. He's probably negotiating with Moloch right now about the rules of the, of the game. I don't know. But <clears throat> the thing is, he made a pretty big announcement about a half an hour after appearing on this program. So don't underestimate the Savage Nation. You can go along with all those in the media who pretend I don't exist. You can go along with Politico and NBC and all the others and make believe I don't exist. But I do exist. I am the dominant talk show in many of the major markets in this country. I beat my competition fair and square. And I am the only one who will tell you that because no one else will tell you that. But I do. And so Trump comes on the show not because I'm a small timer, but because I'm a big timer. And I'll tell you something else. I extended an invitation months ago to Cruz. No response. I extended it to Rubio. No response. I extended it to Bush. No response. That's all you need to know. You talk about cowards. They hide behind their advisors. He doesn't. So don't tell me about cowards. Cruz is the coward. He won't come before the savage nation, by the way. You want to talk about cowards? Send that to Ted Cruz and the other uh, gentleman from Havana. You know, we had our man in Havana already. We don't need two more. You know, you can judge everything by a head of lettuce. Let me tell you that. Let me make it very simple. I'm a man who feeds birds, and I watch bird behavior, and I've talked with you about it. I've watched birds, if you throw four pieces of bread in the water, they'll fight over a single piece of bread. They won't go to the other three. They'd rather fight over that one piece of bread. I observe animal behavior. In that sense, I'm an ethologist, a natural one. I've been a naturalist my whole life. But I observe other things. I observe food as well. When I first went to Donald Trump's country club, which was about five years ago, in 2009, I believe, at Mar-a-Lago in, in Palm Beach, I happen to like buffets, cheap buffets, rich buffets. I like buffets. I won't go to them anymore because of the, the virus that's around. That. I won't go near a buffet. No more. You go to a, bay, a buffet in Marin County, you take your life in your hand without the Zika virus. When you take a look, the liberals sticking their fingers into the... It's, it's disgusting. But anyway, I've always liked buffets. So he has a high-end seafood buffet. I went to it. Donald Trump showed up. Naturally, people wanted to meet him. He owns the club. He came over. He was very nice. And what I said to him was, Mr. Trump, your lettuce is excellent. And he smiled. He said, yes, I make sure it is. I pick it myself. Or something like that. And I decided at that moment that he's a man who manages every one of his entities down to the lettuce. If Obama managed a country club and there was a buffet, you'd have tainted lettuce from El Salvador. But Donald Trump had good lettuce. It was crisp. It was fresh. And I said to him, you know, Mr. Trump, you can judge a restaurant by its lettuce. He said, yes, you can. That's why I pay attention to it. He pays attention to detail. And that's why I like them. So do I. I'm a micromanager. Ask anyone who works for me. I'm not easy to work for. I admit it. I drive myself like no one could drive anyone like I drive myself. Down to the last detail, everything I have to be in charge of and control of. Same for my whole family. That's why we're all extremely successful. We micromanage the lettuce. Never forget that. So does Donald Trump. And that's why I like them. And then when I asked him about the military, I liked them more. And as I heard him on the campaign trail, I liked them more. And as I heard him reading what the equivalent of my bullet points were from Stop the Coming Civil War, my plans, my 40-point plan, I liked them even more. And then as the campaign has gone on and I see uh, many of the ideas in my book, Government Zero, being expressed by Donald Trump, I liked them even more. I'm not saying that he's reading my books. Maybe he is. God bless him. I don't care. All that matters is that my ideas are being heard, and that's really all that matters to me. So you judge for yourself. I want to play for you now a piece, a one-minute piece, please indulge me, and you're going to be the judge as to whether or not I influence Mr. Trump in his current or initial decision not to attend the Fox debate. Let's hear it now, Jim. Big question, would you appear at the Fox debate if Megyn Kelly is the moderator? I hope not. Well, you know, we're looking at it. I don't think she can be fair. I never thought she was a good professional, but we're looking at it. We'll see. I mean, I want to do it. I love the debates. You know that I've won. In fact, you've told people I've won. According to every poll, I've won all five debates. And actually, I guess we've had six. 
hard to believe how it's you know going the time. Donald, why do we need all these debates? You know, this is nonsense. It's a show for the media. You're so far ahead in the polls. If it was me, I would just an empty chair would draw more attention than her, for God's sakes. I understand that. And, and frankly, I think it's too many debates. The Democrats are finished with their debates. That was one of the most boring debates I've ever seen <laughs> or forums or whatever they call it. But uh, too many debates. It's ridiculous. And I love the debating. I've had fun doing it. I've done great with it. I've really uh, everyone said I won the last debate and I won all of the debates, according to the polls. But uh, I'll tell you what, it's it's ridiculous to have so many. And I don't think that Megyn Kelly can be fair. I don't think she's a great professional. No, I agree. All right, so Savage brought it up. I said I wouldn't attend, and then 30 minutes later he said he won't attend. Then we read Trump will skip Fox debate moderated by Megyn Kelly. Whoever her hairstylist is, by the way, should be fired. Uh, but nevertheless, put that aside. She's priming herself for uh, ABC, Good Morning America. That's what the hairdo is for. It's uh, for a whole new appearance. And the issue is for us saving America. That's what it comes down to. So, I mean, I could ask you if I had an influence and now what do I know? You don't know, I don't know. I don't know what his internal thinking is. I really don't. Who knows? El Salvador, meanwhile, has asked people not to have children for two years due to the Zika virus. Savage says quarantine all travelers from Zika-infested nations. I do. It's that simple. That's simple. Common sense. If we had a CDC, they'd be screaming about it. Savage says quarantine all travelers from Zika-infested nations. Diseases without borders. Boosting your immunity against infectious diseases from the flu and measles, on and on. And who do I blame for this? <clears throat> Savage makes his case for the government to enforce travel bans, the use of quarantines, and the importance of proper border screenings. Drawing from his extensive training, Dr. Savage examines the benefits of using specific nutrients to boost the immune system, which in turn increases the odds of surviving a viral infection, as well as preventing other diseases. And it's an important small ebook. It's only two ninety nine. You can order it from Amazon or BNN online. It'll be out next week. I say the timing is perfect. Finally, all the all the planets lined up, and I can really help millions of people not feel as powerless as they do because the government is lying to you. The Zika virus is coming to this country. It will be an epidemic. It could be stopped right now if we had a legitimate government. If we had a legitimate president, if we had a legitimate CDC, they would, order, they would order an immediate travel ban and quarantine of all individuals who have traveled into these countries. That's what quarantines are for. And so, my friends, you make your own decision. If you ha hate me politically, do so at your own risk. Do so at your own risk. Here's an article. Trump to Savage. Europe should have listened to me. WND is a great organization, World Net Daily. I want to thank Joseph Farah. Apparently, they listened to my interview. No one's linked it, of course, because I'm not a member of the old girls' club. And they wrote this article. Donald Trump ripped into European leaders on Tuesday for not having the foresight to follow his lead on the Muslim refugee crisis. The Republican frontrunner appeared on Michael Savage's Savage Nation for a wide-ranging interview on everything from Democrat candidate Sanders' tax plan to predictions of unifying the Republican Party. The billionaire saved harsh criticism for Europe's attempt to absorb millions of Muslim refugees from the Middle East and North Africa. Look what's happening to Germany. Look what's happening to Brussels. I don't know what's wrong with their leaders. At least we're not the only ones that have terrible leaders, he said. What's wrong with their leaders? They're destroying Europe, Trump said. Europe's embrace of Muslim refugees has resulted in a spike of sexual attacks and other forms of violence over the past year. High-profile sexual assaults have already occurred in Austria, Finland, France, Germany, Sweden, and Switzerland. Germany has particularly struggled to deal with its migrants, and you can read more about it. Trump told Savage that he would not duplicate Chancellor Merkel's mistake of inviting 1.1 million migrants into Germany over the last year. President O's plan is for the U.S. to accept 10,000 Syrians in 2016 and up to 100,000 from any country by the end of 2017. Trump said, I'm going to send them back. They have to go back. We have no idea where these people came from, Trump said. They're young, they're strong, and in many cases they are men. When you look at the migratory lines, when you look at the big migration, there are so many men, so many strong men. Why aren't they fighting for their country? We have no idea where they come from. We have to send them back. We have no choice. We have a country that's a mess. Jim, try to pull that for the next hour. The article goes on. The billionaire who has led his Republican rival since August has repeatedly called for a freeze on Muslim immigration. 